All right. Yo, what's up guys? This is Nilobli Tambani from Top Trader South Africa and I'm bringing you guys another installment of Market Masters where I sit down with the most prominent and talented traders in the industry. And today I have a very special guest, like somebody who has much experience. I'm sitting down with Dr. Rory Jean Jacques. That's that correct. <laughs> Jean Jacques. Jean Jacques. Yes. Oh, Jean Jacques. That's okay. French. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, French. So yes. are you like not like you like from or is it just the family? Fam Mar Mauritian French. Oh, Mauritian so French. French colonized Mauritius. Okay. Anyway, okay. Me. No, yeah. great. No, thank you so much for making time today. Great to be here. Uh, I'm I'm truly excited. We've had conversations beforehand, but I think. Now that you're here, I'm just like, yo, I would, I would like for people to also hear what we've been talking about yes. and all that. You've been in the industry for quite some time, ten, actually. Ten, ten, ten years, a decade. Ten years, a, yeah. decade, a full decade right yes. now. Yeah. So you were there before the hype, before everything. Before all these new local brokers you yeah. know, uh, blew up and yes, before yes. You know, a lot of the new South African traders came through and yeah. started you know, um, becoming Instagram traders and stuff like that. We were back back in the day when we learned how to trade properly, okay. you know, not trade like gamblers. Yeah, um, yeah, no, so. that's true. And, and I'm, I'm actually, I was actually mentioning in the previous interviews that, you know, right now, uh, prop firm trading is the big thing yeah. right now and it's actually reintroducing a culture of risk management right now because people now aren't just funding to blow accounts yeah. people are buying a uh, uh, purchasing uh, challenges mm -hmm. and all that and obviously there's criteria towards that that people need to follow and risk management needs to be in place so so so, so risk management is the cornerstone of trading okay. and a lot of you know I've tried multiple systems, trading systems over mm -hmm. the years, and they've all got various pros and cons, and they've all got various um, um, profit outcomes. Um, but you need to pick a strategy that picks your, that, that links with your particular personality. And I've found that, you know, traders are always looking for that high win rate mm -hmm. strategy and that holy grail. And I always say that the holy grail Oh, the holy gra grail trading strategy of trading is risk management. Okay. Simple as that. Yeah. If you can follow risk management, you can stay in the game for long enough. Mm. Um, most trading systems have about a 50% win rate, but it's your risk to reward that puts you in the game. You're risking one rand to make three rand. Mm -hmm. yeah, that is the big difference. So everything sits in risk, re risk and reward. You could have a 30% win rate, but you can still end up profitable because on your winners, you make a 10R, a 15R, a 20R, but you started with a 20 pip stop loss and yeah. you're getting clean entries at levels of, of supply and demand and then you just let the trade play out. Yeah. You know, so trading is not an active Trading is not an active thing. Okay. Trading, trading is 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 putting the trade in, and then the rest of the time being patient, sitting mm -hmm. and waiting, and being disciplined, not being disciplined to follow your rules and follow risk management. Otherwise, what starts to happen is your emotions come into play. You know, math, mathematics is the language of the prof of a profitable trader, and emotions is the language of an unprofitable trader. Sure. You understand? So, so if you're emotional, your risk is out, your risk to reward is out, your position size is too big, you know, slow it down, reduce that risk and understand playing the long game and what it can do to compounding an account. We trade a strategy on NASDAQ, which we've perfected over the last 10 years, uh, where we took a hundred thousand rand account and we turned it into three and a half million in two years. Mm. You understand? But most traders will try and turn that hundred K into 500 K on one trade yeah. or in a day. And then as we know, blowing accounts, it's part of the culture. This is why they, the brokers say that 90% of the traders are not profitable. They're donating to, to the brokers. Yeah. You understand? It's a donation. <laughs> and then they keep on donating because they know there's money. Mm -hmm. But there's no structure. You understand? Knowledge is the foundation. Okay? Sure. Discipline is the structure. Mm -hmm. okay? And then risk management is the, 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 the architect. Uh, risk management and patience is then the architect of a trading system. So, you know, I come from a trading background where I learned a trading system that was a trending trading system okay. that I learned from a, 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 a very successful trader called Warren Peacock and he used to trade funds for the banks and you get to see the time frames that they trade on mm. you know four hour daily monthly time frames and start looking at trading 
a trending based system and back then we were only able to to produce about a 45% return on, on a yearly basis. So. Now on large amounts of money mm-hmm. with correct risk management, that's that's a yeah, massive that, return. That's impressive. The 100%. Yeah. So nowadays we're doing um, 5% a week with very, very low risk management. Mm-hmm. So I think the culture, I think prop firms is an incredible invention. And I think if you're a good, trader with a good edge it's the quickest way to get sufficient funding Mm -hmm. i think traders or a fact is traders are undercapitalized Mm -hmm. so they're loading five thousand rand or they're loading ten thousand rand and they've got things to pay so they they, they're over risking over leveraging and the brokers have cottoned onto this and they're offered offering two thousand two thousand to one leverage unlimited Mm -hmm. leverage and you want to watch your account disappear you know use (laughs) unlimited (laughs) so true yeah Yo, what's up guys? It's competition time again. Top Trader South Africa and XM are giving away an iPad to one lucky viewer. And here's how you can enter the competition. Firstly, make sure you register an account with the link down below in the description and make sure that your account is verified. If you already have an account, register an additional account using the link in the description below under your own profile. Secondly, Deposit a minimum of $50 in your account. Thirdly, trade one lot trading Forex, Gold or Silver. Perfect, the competition will run through the month of June 2023 and the winner will be announced on the 7th of July 2023. So guys, let's get trading right now. So true, yeah, sure. Okay, we're just getting started right here. <laughs> Yeah, so like I said, uh, I'm sitting down with Doctor. You are a doctor. Yes. That is correct. Uh, can you just get just a bit of background on the sure. doctor side? I know we're not here to talk about that, but like, mm. you know. No, 100%. Yes. So that was always my first passion. I got okay. extremely sick when I was in school. Mm. The doctors didn't know what was wrong with me. And it was a, um, an alternative medicine healer that I went to that had studied naturopathy and Chinese herbal medicine that fixed me. Um, but I'd always had an interest in... Um, how to heal the body, how to biohack the body, how to get op- optimal, but not using chemical medicines, using age-old herbal medicines. So I went and studied Ayurvedic herbal medicine, Chinese, Western, I, um, and uh, you know all the planetary herbal systems, and I became a, a medical herbalist. So I have a very busy practice. Um, I own retail health shops, and I also have a range of products called mm. Neogenesis Health. That's one of the strong, one of the fastest-growing health brands in the country. We're in all the big retailers. We're in about a thousand outlets in the country. Then I have a pharmaceutical facility where we manufacture these medicines for for the industry. So I'm 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 a healer at heart, but I'm also a businessman. I'm also an entrepreneur, yeah. and I'm an investor because I've made a lot of capital in various ventures as well as in trading. And I just look at trading as a way to raise capital and then I divest that into properties and into other brick and mortar businesses. Mm. I don't like my capital overexposed to the markets because emotions can come into play and take it, <laughs> it off is the money table. At the end of the 100% day. <laughs> take it off the table and put it there and keep structure and keep discipline and things yeah. like that. So so that's my, my, my background. And I the reason I got into trading was as a doctor you have very busy practice it's the golden handcuffs so you have a very very busy practice Mm. and you're doing exceptionally well but you're trading your time for money sure i wanted to hire i wanted to accumulate money and i wanted to hire money to work for me do you understand so i looked at the markets as a way of generating additional capital could be anywhere in the world um, and I mean, I travel a lot. I've been to 20 countries. I've been up Mount Everest. And trading has taken me to these places. Sure. Maldives, Qatar, um, Brazil. Um, to go and see the world, to go and understand a different culture. And I, 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 I see a lot of traders make a lot of good money in, in, in South Africa, but then they're buying a vrapa and they're buying <laughs> the Louis V and they're popping bottles and they're doing all of this kind of stuff because they think that they've made it. And I want, I want traders to understand that as you start to make that capital, you become rich, but you're not wealthy yet. Mm. There's a big difference between being rich and being wealthy. A wealthy investor mentality is I'm creating Creating this capital, how do I invest it and make more? Yeah. You understand? Do I create a team of traders and they trade capital for me? Do I take it out and divest it into other various industries that all provide a different kind of return? Mm. 
trading is just a way to raise capital. And, and if, you, if you're disciplined and you've got a capital base, you can compound that capital over time. And I don't think a lot of traders understand compounding. They, as they make profits, they withdraw. Yes. So have an account for that. Have okay. an account that is your, your cowboy account, is your gambling account, and put a few thousand rand in there and then go full tilt with high leverage on particular trades. If, even if you've got a six out of 10 win rate system, you're still going to make good money, but then have a much larger account where you follow consistent risk management or even a prop firm account. Mm. Because to make 2% on a $200,000 account is good money. Yeah, very good money. You know, it's nearly 40K, do you understand? And it shouldn't be difficult to make 1% a day. That's 5% a week. Slow and steady. You're making an income, you know? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, I, I I can I can tell that you're a well of uh, vast knowledge. Yes. And today I we are, I'm I'm diving into that. Want to do a deep dive? <laughs> a very deep dive today. Okay. So okay. So a decade in the industry. Yes. Uh, you've seen things happen over time. People have come and go. Yeah. Brokers have come and go. Mm. Uh, in, uh, trading trends have come and go over the year, but let's talk about the early days and just find out what was actually going on, and especially in the South African market. And because uh, right now, what I want to do is uh, I want to have like a contrast between yes. how it is right now and yeah. how it started back then. So, so uh, back in the day, not many, you know, um, traditionally retail traders never had access to yes. the markets. Yeah. Um, and with the advent of technology and computers. Um, and MetaTrader specifically, we were able to now get access to to markets, get access to yeah. capital. In the past, you had to have huge amounts of capital, and you had you you know your orders were put in on the phone. Yeah. Um, so ten to fifteen years ago, it was just getting going. It was okay. just getting started, um, and there were one or two brokers within the country, and you know it wasn't a big thing. We we built one of the biggest copy trading um, um, groups in the country. We had a very we had very successful systems um, and we were also averaging sort of 30 we were averaging about 20 percent a month with the way we were operating yeah. and then people were able to copy trade us um, and the, the the type of system that we were trading we were trading the opening volatility on the all z which is the all the jse all share index okay but over the last 10 years that liquidity and that volatility has dried up mm. so it no longer trends like it used to all that capital that was in our stock market has all been pulled out because of you know, challenges in South Africa and load shedding and political instability and things like that. So we've been able to have, we've had to adjust our trading strategies because that's what we used to trade. And it was a very, very successful system. And you could back test exactly when you would enter, when you would exit, and you could build a whole trading trading strategy and you knew what your expectancy would be over time. Okay. So if you had one stop or two stops or three stops or four stops in a row, you wouldn't panic because you knew that on the process of probabilities, based on the strategy, historically over the last five years, this is how many trades it would be on a monthly basis, because you could literally see it on the chart. And that was a trending-based system based on EMAs. So that was the, 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 the eight cross, cross 21 on the one hour strategy. And it's a trending system which you can still trade now and which we, we still trade. Yeah. And um, that not, has nothing to do with fundamentals, yeah. has nothing to do with, with Fibonacci, has nothing to do with anything. Just that so simple, you can see it so clear. And that's one of the most effective systems even still to date. Mm. Look, it won't make you astronomical money like a lot of these guys are doing with you know trading, day trading, NASDAQ and things like that. But it, what an incredible system. And then over the years, we also watched how the brokers were robbing us, um, okay. how brokers were, you know, South African brokers that were locally orientated as well as other brokers that came from overseas um, are all B-book brokers. So they're all taking the other side of the trade. And we started seeing when we were trading with brokers that were traditionally A-book brokers. So you getting full straight through processing to the market yes. and not getting B-book where, the, trade, where the, the brokers are taking the other side of the trade. You were always getting proper fulls, proper spreads, you know, and their price differences were varying. The spread differences were varying, especially on indices and commodities. So where you think that you're getting in at market price, you're getting in... Yeah. 10 pips or 20 pips away and you know we had a lot of challenges with that we had a, made a lot of money with those brokers and brokers wouldn't pay us out 
and then we've watched a lot of you know very successful South African brokers come about and I think we can also take our hats off to them because they've inspired a whole new generation mm. um, and, and also all those traders that came through that were trading NAS and trading you know, you know all of these Instagram traders were inspiring the youth with lifestyle and with the profits but okay. it's not a true reflection of, 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 of reality and we'll get into that a little bit later um, but I've we've built a mass we've built massive books massive copy trading book um, with large amounts of assets under management over a hundred million with the one and a hundred million with the other and um, those brokers were you know shut down because of unusual things and we had unusual things where we would make profits and the moment it came to withdrawals yeah. then oh where's this and your tax clearance that and you know but when I was drawing small amounts 10,000 okay. at a time there was no problem okay but now when it's quarter of a million or 500,000 where's your tax clearance where's this to delay the process because mm. they understand the psychology of a trader that if they if they're not able to get the money out of the broker within time they're going to trade it or they're going to do yeah, something so and it's, true. it's so going to come true. back yeah. you understand so they or you were trading an account and you're over leveraged and you wanted to start you wanted to refund quickly so that you could you could have sufficient margin but then it doesn't allow it doesn't go through and there's your account so we've we've seen i wouldn't say everything but we've seen so much seen so much everything happen in the market that gives you a level of wisdom and understanding of what's actually happening mm. with local brokers that are b-book brokers which are taking the other side of the trade and that are reliant on your losses to fund themselves yeah. they're not making money just on spread and that's the difference between an a-book institutional broker and another broker that's local and this is the reason why um, I've chosen to move all of our funds on an institutional level to scope markets um, because they have always traditionally been um, institutional and yeah. they provide the liquidity to most of the local brokers. Yeah. So why would I want to deal with a local broker where there might be problems when I know my funds and my clients' funds are going to be safe yeah. over the longer term and then we can then build and grow from there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, powerful. Yeah. yeah, so, okay, so 10 years back, I can hear a lot was happening. You've just kind of just laid out a whole, like, map from, like, how, you know, things have kind of just been different from, from back there, you know. And I think right now you, you kind of touched on something where you, like, uh, a risk management right there. Yes. Uh, in, in a sense, in the way you spoke about it, but, like, it's a matter of, like, right now, uh, the current state of our industry right now, people just want to fund. And blow and be happy with that fun blow yeah. be happy with that so what kind of uh, risk management strategies uh, have you had to use over the years to stay in the game because people don't seem to care about staying in the game they just so so those people that don't care of staying in the game they are not taking a trip to trade they're taking a trip to the casino um, they are glorified gamblers. Yeah. I know because I used to be one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I've probably blown more accounts than yeah. any trader in the history of time. Do, okay. you, do you understand? But I got so sick and tired of losing and losing so much capital mm. and not having consistency with that type of trading mm. that I decided to lower my risk right down and you know build consistency and build profitability over time then it's not hard to accumulate capital yeah. over that time so in terms of um, risk management yeah, strategies. risk management with 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 blowing accounts i looked at it and i said listen i can lower my risk right down even to 10 percent per trade okay. which means i would still need i would need you know most trading systems and my my trading systems I have at least a 7 out of 10 win rate mm -hmm. on a one to one risk risk to reward okay. which is unbelievable do you understand yeah. um, and even if it's even if it's less than that with a one to two risk reward um, you know for every one rand that I'm risking or every 10,000 rand that I'm risking I'm making 10,000 rand or I'm making 20,000 rand depends on the system I have multiple different accounts okay. one trades a trending system um, on the four hour and the daily the other one is more the short term day trades with a little 20 pip stop loss and taking a 30 or 40 pip profit mm. so that's sort of for the daily profits yeah. um, and once I've made profits I take a break from the market um, I think a lot of traders are always trying to be in a trade mm. and if you understand how 
the physiology of what trading does to the chemistry in your brain, and this is what I studied in medicine, is that your heart rate goes up, your stress hormone, which is cortisol, goes up, your blood pressure goes up, and you have an increase in dopamine, which is the same thing that gamblers have the moment they put down that money on the craps table, or the moment they they, they, they pull that lever and they see they made something, there's a little light up in that brain of dopamine. Mm. It's the same thing that Instagram does. So we become addicted to trading, we become addicted to being in drawdown or being in profits or seeing profits. And it's about being aware of yourself as an individual. Trading is 20% trading is knowledge, 80% emotional and psychology. So the traders that are not winning haven't learned how to master themselves, haven't learned how to master their emotions. And if they are emotional, their risk is too high. How do you lower the risk to realize that there's going to be a thousand trades after this? So mm -hmm. if you've burnt your capital, how are you going to trade again? Mm -hmm. Even if you're trading a small account, like a 10,000 Rand account, you can start smaller even with a 5% a, um, risk per trade, make 500 Rand, make 500 Rand. And you can compound that account within six months to 100,000 easy. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? This is why I say, the the prop firm you can get a look ten thousand or fifteen thousand rand in and you can do a challenge if you can pass the first stage and the second stage you're home free and there are a lot of incredible traders in south africa that don't have access to capital and that's also part of the reason why i got more involved in trading got more involved in the fund management is there were so many good traders but they didn't have capital yeah. so i said show me your trade history and i'll give you capital to trade yeah. and many of them that was my next question. Burnt accounts. <laughs> <laughs> they just they yeah. gave them capital, burnt again, let's try again. Burnt okay. capital, try again, let's do okay. it. Even with uh, um, various prop firm, uh, they would show me some of their history. Um, and the thing is, with certain prop firms, you can only get up to a certain level of capital funding. Okay. For example, two accounts on FTMO to $400,000. So now you capped at that. Mm -hmm. So I then would speak to traders and say, well, I'll fund a challenge, you can trade it, and we'll, we'll split the funds. And then we'll max this profile out, and then we'll create multiple profiles, and then we can build up to a million or two million dollars across multiple, and then we can link all of these accounts via copy trade, you understand? Yeah. And then you just follow it one master account with half a percent risk or one percent risk. Mm. And I have had some traders that have been very consistent over time, and then something happens, and it, it changes. They go over risk, they don't follow it, and yeah, it's, 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 I have got a, a two or three good traders that have been with me for a long time, mm -hmm. and their, their results are exceptional. Okay. Um, and they're disciplined, and they're non-emotional, and I have no problem putting you know, client, client capital with them for, for, for growth from that perspective. Mm -hmm. um, I think risk management, without a doubt, is fundamentally the simplest thing you can do to, to hack your trading. Just lower the risk, yeah. slow and steady. It will allow you to think clearly, it will allow you to, to, to see the setups, um, it will allow you to not have FOMO, it will allow you to not be over emotional, w closing your trades too early because you see that there's money there, it will allow you to hold your trades and let the market play out. Um, I think risk management fundamentally, and every trader struggles with this because yeah. they want to make money quickly, greed, the little <laughs> trading demon that sits there and, you know, and, and sometimes I even have it and I, I just I just got sick and tired of losing. I just slowed it right down. I just lowered the risk and I increased the size of the capital. So the money I was making on half a percent was exceptionally meaningful money, mm. you know, on a, on a uh, $500,000 account or a, a million dollar account, you make 1%, it's, it's, it's good income. Yeah, it's yeah, very, very, very good income. Very, very good income. Yeah. Yo, you're talking about greed right there, and I think uh, a lot of people really don't come to that point, to that point of realization that, hey, look, actually, how I'm trading is more destructive than actually building at mm. this point, you know. Yeah, so uh, I'm glad that you know got to a point where you were just like, you know, risk management needs to come and play. <laughs> 100%, and I think the, the, the traders that have very big egos mm. don't make good traders because they, they, they want to win and they want to win all the time. Mm. And if you have a winner's mentality, 
um, you you want to you want to make sure that you win all the time. And even if you win nine out of ten times, and you don't follow that consistency over time, you can do a thousand trades following your risk management. You can lose it all on one trade. Mm. So the one way that I recommend traders, if they're starting out and they've pulled a bit of capital, is to lower your leverage. Yeah. So that you can't over risk. Lower to fifty to one. In Europe and in in other um, Europe and even in America, yes. you can't even get a twenty to one leverage. Yeah. Maximum fifty to one. Yeah. And I applaud brokers in in South Africa that only offer a hundred to one. Mm. But but traders that trade Nasdaq or trade gold, they need leverage. Yes. They need five hundred to one. They need a thousand to one. They need to load in their five hundred bucks and hope that they can make five k or or ten k. And there are strategies that work well, even if you're following a signal provider that's got quite good results and there are quite good signal providers yeah. and they're also absolutely horrible horrible and terrible ones I whenever <laughs> I see a signal provider I pay and I join them okay I've probably joined every single signal provider in the country <laughs> from 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 all the guys that were trading Nasdaq you trade their signal what stop loss trade yeah. the next signal stop loss mm. seven out of ten trades stop loss but he's still posting profits. Yeah, every oh, day. <laughs> making money, making money, withdraws every day. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I'm like, how? This how? Is, yeah. I, I, I put it into a system, I created risk management, loaded in some capital, and I followed every single signal. So, you know, what they're doing there is they're offering the signal, they're going short on one broker and they're going long on the other broker. Yeah, Do you true. understand? Or they're with the same broker that allows that. And not a lot of brokers allow that because you're manipulating the system. Yeah. And then as you see that that one's running in profit, they just start hitting, they just start leveraging in and scaling in. And yeah, the other one blows, they lose 5K, but on this one they made 20 or 30K. And that's, that's not trading. Yeah, it's not. That's, that's, that's calculated gambling. Improbabilities. Yeah, Sim- simple as that. Um, but if you've got a good win rate, um, even if it's a signal provider or your own trading strategy, take your five thousand rand and divide it by ten accounts mm. with high leverage. Mm. And then when the signal comes through, hit it full tilt. Mm. You might make ten or fifteen or twenty thousand on that. But let's say it's three trades in a row: lose five hundred rand, lose five hundred rand, lose five hundred rand, make ten thousand rand. You understand that that is that that to me is not trading. That's okay. calculated gambling. It removes the emotion, and I understand, and it can work exceptionally well. But on the level that we trade with, on an institutional level, we need very very defined risk management, defined capital management, because we're managing large amounts of other people's funds within a PAM account as well. Mm. Um, so that PAM account, you can see exactly how we're performing and I think since the beginning of the year we've been averaging 6% growth so we're 43% up since the beginning of the year with a max 10% drawdown mm. on our particular sure. profile. Yeah. So by the end of the year realistically we should be 70 to 80% up. Mm. Now if you took a certain amount of capital and let that compound Mm. over three years to five years and you put it in a compound calculator like Einstein said compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world yeah. and it is because compounding is where you make true 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 wealth um, have that amount every time you make profits take it and put it save it make profits put it and save it build up that capital sum and put it somewhere where it can grow slow and steady you know, with a PAM account or there's various copy traders mm. in the country, yeah. look at their risk management, um, look at how it works and find something that's slow and steady over time. But then have your smaller accounts that you can take a punt at so that it satisfies that greed demon to want to gamble, but you protect your capital. Otherwise, you're constantly going to burn out and you're going to lose your shirt. And I've had a lot of traders that have done that, mm. that were trading for me, they lost astronomical amounts of money and they lost everything had to help them pay for their their you know their apartments and whatever debt that they had and just take care of them when they were in that down stage because i know i've been there before and i'm sure you know you've also been there and every trade has been there when you wipe that account and you feel like the smallest person on the earth because you know that you shouldn't be doing this but you feel (laughs) stupid uh yeah so we, we find a lot of people uh chasing 
strategies right now mm. obviously uh, you mentioned earlier on that the holy grail strategy is actually risk management <laughs> right there which i really love but what do you have to say to people who are constantly chasing the the next you know best strategy mm. the next hottest strategy because essentially it's what a lot of people think right now because you even said that uh, trading is a 20 percent emotions and then 80 percent um psychology basically is how you said it so essentially right now it's like where the strategy fits in into all of that yeah so so the the your knowledge and your your foundation your strategy and you can learn any any strategy i mean you can learn um smart money concept um you can you know ema cross supply and demand you know um but you know support and resistance i mean it's fundamental but uh, going a little bit further into supply and demand on key areas on the four hour and then waiting for a close looking at the 30 minutes and then waiting for a close and a confirmation and you can get extremely good risk reward on that i think you know um th- most of the, the good strategies most of the strategies that are out there have got a 50 60 percent win rate you you just need to follow them and allow the risk to reward to go out yeah. um you know there's there's no magic indicator there's no <laughs> magic trading system <laughs> yeah um and you can pick any of these systems and they work if you work it and if you follow um the uh, follow the system and follow it with discipline and risk management and most trading systems you can back test mm-hmm. and you can get an idea of exactly how it works and i mean this particular strategy that we trade on 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 nasdaq is as the market goes against us we add into the trade in weakness but we don't do it on a martingale stage okay, yeah. as in increasing exponentially um, i've tested eas over the years mm-hmm. that had similar strategies that i've watched just blow accounts yeah. over and over and over and over and over and this manual strategy we trade and we trade it specifically only on nasdaq and we permable perma bulls on on the nasdaq okay. so we permanently bullish, bullish on the nasdaq and sure. then you you know often you'll see even in in a bear market which we currently in the biggest rallies are in bear market so we constantly looking at fibonacci at key levels and we slowly ca- scaling in but our risk management is on point and this is what keeps us in the market Okay, yeah, sorry. I I'm, I'm, my my mind right now is kind of breaking that <laughs> down. So what you're basically basically saying that regardless of the market is going against you right right now currently, mm. you're still entering positions, but as you enter positions, obviously it's just less than the previous position. Is so if that's my understanding. Same, same position size. Oh, same position size. Same position size. Okay. But we 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 only sort of every 100 pips or 200 pips yeah. we're looking at key liquidity levels. on um on fibonacci from the high to the low and then we trading key levels on that and then there's always a bounce and there's always a rally and okay. there's always liquidity unless there's something spectacular happening in the world you know one of the presidents has said something or you know mm-hmm. there's you know you know covid or something along yeah. those lines happening and there's a massive drop in the markets even then you know there'll still be key areas and we'll just allow the space and we just keep the same position size okay. and oftentimes it'll get to a key area and then you get a rally and then it catches all of these T- sometimes the pen wheel close on key areas but we've been making astronomical profits on yeah. on this particular strategy but your risk management needs to be on on point because you might be carrying a 20 to 30% open drawdown yeah. you understand I can and you need to be patient and you need to have balls of steel <laughs> <laughs> because as yeah. it starts to go against you and mm. i could show you some of our trade histories is un- unbelievable mm. slow and steady no emotions trust your strategy and the mark as you've seen with nasdaq that will come in on certain days and then it has 2 300 pip rally mm. and that's when we collect all our profits yeah, okay. and then some and then we we close so close. that has a 75% win rate strategy we've now taken the strategy and we've now coded it into an ea oh, okay and yeah. we couldn't find anyone across the world to trade it we found someone in russia who could trade it for us okay. and he's now coded this in and we've let this ea trade since the beginning of the year and it's 46% up so. and it's only ever had a 10% drawdown and we have a max stop out okay. of of 10%. So and I have a huge amount of my own capital in that. Mm. That's my strategy. This frees up my mm. time mm-hmm. to and I think 
building it into artificial intelligence and into EA is where the future of, of, of trading will be going to a large extent. Um, and I've tested every, most of, you know, you'll see a lot of the Instagram traders selling robots. Mm -hmm, yeah. 12,000 Rand, 8,000 Rand, none of those work. I've tested all of them. Yeah. They're just going to take your money and... So if you want to buy any of these robots, ask them to show you a trade history where that robot has been trading an account, one account consistently, live account for one year. Mm. Give me an investor password to it. Yeah. And this will save any of these traders that want to try this stuff. Don't be fooled by the, the flash and the money. You'll see a lot of them will close any comments you know, you can't make comments, can't make comments. because everyone's <laughs> shying them because they lie, but they're driving yeah. around in a Lamborghini Urus. Yeah. You understand? Mm. I've seen these guys, I've messaged them, I've said, show me. Yeah. Mm, they can't. Yeah. So these guys are clowns, these guys are players, these guys are playing the game and and this is what gives our industry a bad name. Mm. Um, and I think traders need to be aware of the reality. You can't just load a robot and expect, we'll make some money, yeah. probably will. Yeah. And then the next time something happens, CPI happens or, or NFP, Gone. you're gonna say cheers, goodbye. <laughs> Thank you brokers <laughs> collecting, collecting their donations. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, so my favorite, my favorite topic actually, yeah, and I, th I think a lot of the viewers probably know by now, is money management yes. for me. And I always make sure I ask everyone uh, a money management uh, question because essentially I always feel like you know a failure for people to manage their monies mm -hmm. is the reason why a lot of people do not find themselves in the game in the, in the long run. So what are some of the money management? Uh, strategies you've had to implement in your life and in your trading as yes. well to to remain today until up until today and still going on another couple of decades as well yes yeah so so money management starts with yourself first mm -hmm. it's uh, before it starts with your your trade account so it starts with um, wherever you've been making your money whether it's from your job having sufficient set aside, mm -hmm. having a three to six month um, emergency account, that three to six months worth of expenses to, to, if anything happens, you lose your job, you have six months worth of runway to, to, to cover everything, okay? To manage your debt efficiently. I closed all my accounts, closed all my credit cards, closed all of that, because when you're under financial stress and pressure that you need to pay the house, you need to pay the car, you need to pay, you start going into the market with the mentality of I need to make money. Okay. I need to make money, I need to make money now, I need to feed myself, as opposed to I need to going in with an investor mentality of I'm coming in with a little bit of capital, I'm going to grow this slowly over time and mm -hmm. I'm going to compound it. So first and foremost, um, the foundation needs to be to save up and I've learned a, a, a money law of the universe that people say, but I only have this amount of money, 6,000 or 10,000 or 20,000 and it's all eaten up and I'm bullied by my, my expenses, how am I gonna save anything? So I made a commitment to myself that whatever amount came in, I was going to take 10 or 20% and I was going to save it into an account that I have no access to, that has maybe a 30 day lag before that withdrawal will come. Mm -hmm. And I just put that money in there and I commit that money to myself, to my soul. I call it an immortality account. So it's not committed to any earthly endeavor to pay debts or to pay hospital bills or to go out and pop a bottle or anything like that. It's dedicated to myself because as you save that money, it will give you 10 times more satisfaction than anything on the earthly plane will give you. And that you're dedicating to yourself. And as you start to save that money, something weird happens where the money will pop up to fill what you need. Because you've affirmed to the universe, you've affirmed that I'm worth more than any of this and I'm paying myself first and this is a commitment to myself mm. it's a commitment to my soul this is a commitment to to a much bigger picture and every time you save that money you're accumulating that and you see it accumulating there it gives you an emotional cushion it gives you a foundation an emotional stability and then very very soon it will get 
to 10 grand and to 20 grand and to 30 grand. And then you get some other kind of money. Maybe someone offers you a side job and you put that money in there. And that will give you 10 times more and then it starts to accumulate. Then you'll take it and put it into something that will be a higher return but is still safe. And the objective with that is to save as much as you possibly can to build that emotional foundation that you don't feel emotional when you're trading or when you're doing business deals or when you're doing a range of things. Mm -hmm. And the goal is to get that level of capital producing so more interest than what your expenses are on a monthly okay. basis. And then by then you'll basically be experiencing a little bit of heaven on earth. <laughs> <laughs> because you won't need to get out of bed, the capital will be that you know you're producing income passively. Mm. That is true financial freedom. Sure. You know when you do not, and when you no longer need to trade your time for money, you've hired the money, you've been disciplined, and the universe will test you. You'll save it to ten or twenty or thirty or fifty thousand, and then you'll have an expense come up, or your your mom will get sick, or you need to repair the car, or you need to do something, and then you'll spend that money. And then you'll feel this small because you'll be like, I spent six months or a year accumulating that and that was dedicated to me. And it sounds so simple. Okay. It sounds so simple, but you commit to that, it'll change everything. And that's just fundamental money management stuff for life. Going, in, going into trading, number one, if you follow money management, number two, you're gonna, you, number one, you're going to keep your capital. Okay. You're not going to burn your capital. You're going to make money, you're going to make a small amount of money, and you're going to stay in the game. The key is to stay in the game. If you haven't got capital, you're not in the game. You're going to, you're mm. going to burn your capital. Um, and pick an account to follow risk management on, and then pick one or two accounts with smaller amounts where you can, if you are one of these traders that are impressed by Instagram profits and things like that, which you shouldn't be. I'd recommend if you're trading, delete Instagram. Yeah. Focus 100%. on your trading. Focus on your trading. Run your own race. Stay in your own lane. Every trader, every person, every human has got a, a different upbringing, different mindsets, um, different subconscious sabotage patterns, different self-conscious sub subconscious beliefs of I'm not good enough. I'm not, I don't have enough money, my father said I'm an idiot, my mom doesn't believe in me, my friends don't believe in me, I don't believe in myself, it's just, you know, the, it's the government, it's the Fed, it's yeah. NASA, it's aliens, whatever excuse, people have got so many different reasons on a subconscious level. So focus, delete Instagram, focus on one account, slow and steady with risk management, uh, pick whatever strategy, optimize and learn the skill, or while you're learning a skill, join a trading group that does markups of charts, okay. that provides trading setups or trading signals, you know, and follow that one specifically and then follow this one specifically because it takes time to learn how the markets work, how the liquidity works, what happens when price reacts at levels of demand. What do these wicks mean mm -hmm. when it's wicking in this area? Mm -hmm. That means it's taking out stop losses and the, the banks or the big institutions are building positions and they know all the retail traders have got all their stops here. So you think there's one wick and then you're in, goes, shh, wicks you out, yeah. shh, wicks you out again. Yeah. How many times will do that? And that is hundreds of millions of dollars because they can't just empty that all into, into the market at once. They have, to, they have to pull all of those traders in so they get better price and then they have to, and then you'll watch it push up and you have to be patient to allow this market to breathe and allow it space. And you know, there are a lot of good traders that provide these kind of trading strategies and watching, watching wicks and watching the candlesticks and refining and looking at pennants, looking at bullish pennants mm -hmm. or um, you know, various kinds of continuation patterns because you'll often think it's broken. You know, a lot of traders will see a level of support and resistance. They'll, the moment it reaches that level for the first time, you can you can put a trade in and you'll normally get a 50% drop but often what happens is they'll get to that level all the retail traders will start trading like let's say it's a weekly and then it just continues and it continues yeah. and it continues 150 100 150 pips squeezes out all the retail traders that have over leveraged and put their stocks up there mm -hmm. and then the next day it turns and shh, does exactly mm. what you want so if your risk is on point allows you to stay in the game and then carry that position while you slowly add in, you know. 
Um, so I think keeping focused on your strategy, whatever you're learning, marking up the charts, you will eventually get a feeling for how the markets move, um, how that liquidity moves and how the banks are operating. And that's also something that we teach in our mentorship. So you start to see, and you're like, when it gets to that certain area, you're like, oh, I must buy him. Like, wait, patient, be patient. Traders are like snipers. Yeah. We wait, and we wait, and we wait, and we wait again. And then when it's time to exit, we execute. And sometimes with not even a two or three or five pip drawdown. And as it hits that level of liquidity, it's gone. And we mm. take 50 pips, we take 100 pips. And you build that capital over time. Yeah. yeah. So that, you, you that's know, it's, point. You know, it's funny. You just said traders are like snipers. And I know one thing for sure is that a lot of traders right now are chasing sniper entries. Yes. And they don't understand. What you just said right now is so powerful, actually, that saying that the traders are like snipers, not just to chase the sniper entries, mm. you know. It's all about waiting for that mm. opportune moment in the market. Yeah, they're all trying to get the cleanest entries. And they're all trying to get the cleanest e uh, entries at areas of interest and at areas of liquidity. Um, but oftentimes you, you, you'll get into that area, but it's, it's, it's still continuing. Give, it, give, give the price time to develop. The market will show you. The, the, you know, it, it does the same thing over and over and over and over. Mm -hmm. And even, you know, we trade Elliott Wave Theory, and I reckon if, if traders want to learn a system that is on point, it's Elliott Wave. Okay. Um, because that was developed in the early 1900s, and it's based on human psychology, and it's based on wave principles, and it's based on the same repeatable patterns that have been happening mm -hmm. over the years. And then you can, you can um, introduce a couple of Wickle candle patterns or various forms of um, penance or things like that that'll give you those key clean areas of entry. Elliott Wave would be one of the, the, the best systems, yeah, and, yeah. Um, especially on the larger time frames. You can see it consistently over and over and over and over again. It's there, it's right there. Just dedicate your time to studying the charts, studying the Elliott Wave, or finding mentors that are specialists in Elliott Wave, mm. and stick with risk management, mm. slow and steady. And as you start to build slowly over time with good risk management, you'll start to see the market, you'll start to understand, you'll start to see that this is a much higher probability trade. Do you understand? Then you can go a little bit higher risk or you can have a secondary account that you go higher risk on, but you protect your main bread and butter foundational account. Mm. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. Um, so, okay, so what are some of the biggest mistakes that you that you did in the beginning of your trading career, like before you got to the place that you're at right now, like so what's some of the biggest mistakes? Sure, um, biggest, biggest mistakes was not understanding um, the strategies properly and not following risk management. Mm. Thinking that I knew that I knew the market and that I understood and also uh, fighting against the market, mm. not being calmer and being, you know, loading an account with 10 or 20K um, and then trading a strategy, you're trading a particular signal and then watching it start go against me and then refusing to take the loss, yeah. funding more capital. And oh, it's gonna turn to this area, adding more, continues going. Now I start running into margin call, load more capital, load more capital, load more capital. It's gonna turn, it's gonna turn, it doesn't. By this stage you had 100K in the account. Keeps going, keeps going against me, need to protect margin, put in another 100K, I refuse to lose. Now it's 200K, continues going against me, loading in another 100K. And I did that all the way up to nearly 800,000, wiped it, gone. Sure. So I would suggest if you're a high risk trader, <laughs> don't refund. Rather, if it's that on that amount, trade it, take the loss, take it on the chin. Mm come back with a cleaner, better, better strategy. Mm. That's, that's, that's probably, and I've done that a few times. Um, <laughs> and then after that, I was like, listen, I don't want to, uh, yeah. and, and you know, the, probably the, the and, and the, it's probably one of the most humbling. Okay. And, and this happened after I had a period of time where all I was doing was just winning. Sure. Consistent, 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 because I'm making, made so much money from the market your level of dopamine and serotonin, which are your happy chemicals and your motivation chemicals, was running on euphoria. You're not thinking clearly. Mm. 
So now when I have big wins and I make good money, I take a break from the market. Okay. Take that money out and I put it into something slow and steady like I pay off a property and I've paid off multiple properties as a result of that. I have them on Airbnb and they're producing slow and steady income that, that are not giving me sleepless nights. You understand? <laughs> and if you're not sleeping well at night and you're stressed and you're having girlfriend problems and stuff like that, your risk is too high on trading. You know, the impact, they've, they've done physical research where they've actually, traders have much higher blood pressure, much higher stress hormones, much higher blood sugar. They've actually physically tested them that it's the most stressful career in the world mm. to choose. Mm. And trading is more a, 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 a process of self-mastery then it is a process of making money or financial freedom. Because if you can't master yourself and you can't master your emotions, impossible, you'll never, you'll never trade. So what are you doing to upskill yourself? Are you reading? Mm -hmm. Are you reading other books from other traders? Mm -hmm. are, you, are you taking time out to look after your health? Because if your health is not good, you're not thinking clearly. Mm -hmm. you know, are you hungover? Are you drinking? Are you eating terribly? So if you want to become an Olympic level trader, you need to follow an Olympic level life. Style. Mm. And I think not a lot of traders do that yeah. because clean mind, clean spirit, clean, clean clarity and the ability to see the charts. When I follow that, I'm on point. Mm. And I've often found that we'll trade consistently great for a few weeks, a few months, we'll go out to have a big night and the next week I want to hit the markets. And on that, that hangover for the few days, your chemicals are out, your brain is inflamed, you're not thinking clearly, you're not making the correct. So if you're sick, don't trade. If you're hungover, don't trade. And if you're drunk, definitely don't trade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, that's true. And, uh, and you know, um, you know, you spoke about popping bottles and yeah. everything. And obviously that's a culture that a lot of people are chasing, you know, wanting to be like pop bottles and they go back to the markets as well. And, you know, yeah. So, so yeah. That reality, I yes. think, is, has, has, has created a f an, an illusion and a myth. And I think a lot of traders that have done well initially mm -hmm. then started to become celebrity traders. Yes. And they started to say, this is what the lifestyle is about. Um, and they would then be posting false profits. Um, it wouldn't be real profits. You wouldn't see consistent profits. They would only be posting their profits, you would never see their losses. Mm. So any of these guys that you see doing this, say, hey, can I trade alongside with you? Can you show me an account that you've been trading consistently? None of them can do that. And what they do is the lifestyle that they promote, becoming celebrity traders, they then start offering signal services. Mm. And they'll get thousands of people that join their signal, thousand, uh, their, their signal service for thousands of rands. That is how they start to fund their lifestyle. Or they'll start operating an IB link, you know, yeah. and then they'll, they'll, they'll operate from that perspective where it's actually not from trading skill. Um, there's a large portion of that, not taking anything away from the good traders because there's some exceptionally good and disciplined traders that are low key that follow that. But people are attracted to the shiny lifestyle mm. and I can tell you once you've got the car and you've got a few mansions and you've got a few hublots and stuff like that your mentality changes and you realize what the truth is of it but until then everyone thinks that that is the be all and end all that you have made it when you have the material things and the moment they start making a bit of money from trading or something like that they want to go and spend it on the flash stuff you know, why not take another approach and rather create true financial freedom? And as you start to make that money, save it, accumulate it, retire your Google. If your if if your if your if your um, um, if your grandmother and your mother are still working and you're not taking care of them, you know uh, that would give you more satisfaction. Accumulate true money. Ac accumulate true wealth. Because having the status symbols is what? What does that act? What does that act? Does that make you important? It 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 doesn't. So having all the fancy stuff and all of that kind of stuff, looking at these traders, it's not a true reflection. The true reality of trading is it's boring, boring as fuck. <laughs> it should be so true. It should be. It should be so boring. It's it, trading is so simple, but it's the most difficult, easy money you'll ever make. Mm -hmm. Okay, trading trading is a very very simple thing. 
but to master the emotions around it is will be the most the biggest challenge that any of the traders go through so if you're looking at the culture of opulence and the lifestyle none of the traders that i see that are making all this money actually really have true wealth most of them are renting the houses that they're in most of the time these cars in a period of time are taking away or getting taken away from them because there's a type of social pressure that gets created mm -hmm. when they're making these profits and they're doing the stuff that that alters the way that they should be doing things and then you start to see them start doing various legal things and this is why many of them have been arrested over the years creating unusual crypto coins and doing all sorts of things and I know all of them watched all of them over the years you know follow follow the 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 slow and steady path just like the rabbit and the hare yeah. um, so the hare and the tortoise and and you will get there um, all the Instagram profits and stuff like that and all the signal services ask them for a trade history mm. So your signal service that you show me, you're always creating a new group once a month. You understand? You're always closing it and creating a new group. Where's the trade history to show consistency? Yeah, Trading is about consistency. Do you understand? Even traders that trade for me on FTMO, they come to me and they say, oh, here's my profits. But okay. you made those profits in the middle of last year. Okay. Where's your account that you've been trading now consistently? Oh, no, I took a break and I did this and all these stories. Show me an account. Bring me an account that you've been trading for a year or two mm -hmm. with slow and steady, consistent profits. I'll give you as much capital as you want. Yeah. You understand? With defined risk parameters. Um, so if they can't say, well, these were the 20 trades that we took, this was the, the stop loss because you can trade a signal with a 100 pip stop loss, but you're making 20 pip or 30 pip profit. Yeah. What kind of risk reward is that? Yeah. It, 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 That's not money. It, oh, it, we made pips. Bullshit, it, it, man. It, it does not make sense. <laughs> exactly. It rouses me up so much because uh, there's actually one um, popular trader. Uh, he'll be here. He'll. he'll I, I, it doesn't matter actually. Doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he literally posts a one minute chart mm. with like 80 lots. And I'm, I'm talking about 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80 lots and showing profits on a, on a one minute chart. And you ask yourself, how? Why? Where's the withdrawals? Let me tell you, a lot of the traders will show you a real account. Yes. And that they've made withdrawals from that. Yeah. It's also, they can create their own server mm. and they can manipulate the process yeah, yeah. do you understand um you know it's, it's and this is where guys are also giving accounts to to traders to trade for um fund management it's not yes. their money yeah do you understand they're gonna go full risk on that mm. you know um and so that's why if you do give them an account give them an account with lowest leverage and a lot of these brokers allow you to adjust the leverage yes give them sure. 50 to 1 give them 20 to 1 what more do you need if you're going to be following 1% or 2% risk? You're only going to be opening two or three trades at a time. Yeah. You don't need so much leverage. You don't. You don't need more than 100 to 1 leverage unless you're trading like an idiot, which most most traders, most of us are, sorry to say, like even me. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm still> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so, you know, if he can't show you a signal history to say, and, and pips mean nothing. Okay. Risk to reward is what you're looking at. And... If they, what even better if they can give it to you in percentage. I'm risking one percent, and we made one percent. We risk one percent, we made half a percent. We risk one percent, we're making three percent. Yeah. Do you understand? Pips don't mean anything mm -hmm. because hundred pips or twenty pips is a very very big difference. You're trading a hundred pips or hundred and fifty pips stop loss on gold, mm -hmm. but you're making. 50 pips, do you know how long you know you would have to hold it or even mm. on currencies? Mm. 100 pip stop loss and then you're only getting a, a little 30, 30 pip there, which means you're risking 1% but you're making 0.3%. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. And and if you if it was divided in two positions, you're making even less. Yes. So you'll make profit, even if it's a high win rate, you'll make profit, 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 seven trades profit. One stop loss, all that seven trades profits gone. Sure. So risk to reward ratio is the most important thing, and traders need to start thinking in the level of percentage. Mm. If I'm trading a one, if a hundred thousand rand account, and I'm risking five percent, means I'm risking five thousand rand, mm. and then I'm making a one to one risk reward. 
I'm making 5,000 Rand, then you can make, you can make relatively good money. Yeah. So these things, don't look at pips. Pips means nothing. If you go and do the maths on that and you actually work out if you risk per percentage, you don't make money. And I can, I can see immediately from a, from a signal history. This is why, number one, they don't give you signal history. Yeah. Number two, they change their groups. Mm -hmm. Number three, they don't give you an investor password mm -hmm. to follow, to say, trade alongside me, slow and steady along those routes. So do the same with all these um, robots. I, yeah, I would really like to try and because people are burning so much money and yeah. they're getting so scammed and they, yeah. They're getting hurt, and also just because you're following a signal doesn't mean that this guy knows exactly what is going on. I know the moment I put in a trade, anything can happen. Yeah, I have a fifty percent. I'd look at it as a fifty-fifty. Yes, fifty percent chance to loss, fifty percent chance to make money. If I do that, then why would I go high risk? Why would I risk fifty percent on this trade? What for? Maybe for kicks, to get to get an adrenaline rush to gamble or because you see the guys on Instagram doing it and making so much money mm -hmm. you know you need to ask yourself you know this is what I've realized is the truth and the reality so you know delete your Instagrams focus on your own focus on your own path that's how you win in this game sure yeah but I was gonna ask you my next question was to ask you about the realities of trading but hey <laughs> you kind of just we get, did we get into it yeah you kind of just like literally just like Smash it out the park. So the reality honestly. is, it's very, very boring. Yeah. You, 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 you mark up your charts. You wait for key areas. You have to wait for price to develop. You know, you will see that it, when it comes to this key area is where I'm going to be looking. But I'm not going to be entering when it comes in, especially if you're trading the bigger time frames, mm -hmm. the four hour and the daily. The trades don't come that often. Yeah. True. And then when they do come, you, you. You're prepared, you're way ahead. Mm. Trading is not, oh, I need to get in now, oh, the market's moving without me, and you're having FOMO. Don't worry, there'll be hundreds, there'll be thousands, there'll be 10,000 trades after that. There'll always be another trade. Mm -hmm. There'll always be something to trade. There'll always be, you know, and what I also recommend traders do is also don't trade everything. Try and distill down to a few key pairs or one key, um, asset that you can learn how what is its nature what is its personality how does pound yen work lots of liquidity big moves do you understand mm. it's a trending currency you know same with gold gold is emotion gold is all over the place gold gold is an emotional people get into gold when there's emotional turmoil there's a whole range of things mm. you know it's a very very temperamental same with nasdaq high volatility you know it can make good money one of my my favorite is us 30 okay. you know because it, it has a sort of a slower, more consistent feel to it, and it tends to be very, very consistent off certain areas if there isn't uh, emotion. So, so pick the high liquidity pairs where you can get in on clean entries and you can make a good risk reward. And those are pound USD, pound yen, uh, gold, and NAS. Um, NAS not as much um, on particular strategies, and then US 30. So, pick a pair. Learn it. Learn where the key areas are, and you can make exceptionally good money if you if you learn that. Yeah, you know, I've I've sat down and spoken to so many people, and I'm literally it's hitting me right now is that this this game it literally so much goes into mm. trading and into pressing buy or sell. Yeah. It's just literally just two buttons, you yes. know, and I, I'm just sitting here, I'm like, as you talk, I'm just but, like, but like, But yo. the lead up to that, yeah. and the amount of things that you've had to learn, the amount of charts that you've had to look at, and, and I think traders that only trade technically also need to learn about fundamentals. What is the Fed doing? What is China doing? What is Russia doing? Do you understand? What is, what is global policy, what is the American policy doing that's mm -hmm. driving the markets? Because everything revolves around... The U.S. Everything yeah. revolves, revolves around what what the Fed is doing. Are they raising interest rates? Are they reducing? Mm -hmm. And what does that mean for the currency? Yeah, you understand. Mm -hmm. And I don't. You know, if you're going to study medicine or you're going to study law, how many years are you going to commit to that? Mm -hmm. Four years, five years, plus all your community service and stuff like that. Would you give your money to a trader that had only learned for six months? Mm -hmm. No. It, to refine it and to become a professional and not a lot of traders treat this like a business mm -hmm. they're just oh but my mate's making money Shh. <laughs> let's put oh, come come yeah, you know let's yeah. hit it let's like, and you're not trading you you're just hitting that signal you're taking a gamble and um, maybe a high probability gamble but you're not you're not trading you haven't learned 
all the fundamentals. You don't even know what a pip is or how a pip is created. Or you don't know what a candlestick is. Why are we looking at candlesticks? Where was that evolution of candlesticks when they were trading rice? And who was the, or who was the original you know, creator of the candlestick? And how, if you really study it, what the results you can get. So if you treat it like a proper business and you treat it professionally and you put in the time and you learn as much, no one can actually really teach you trading. Okay, mm -hmm. You can join a group and you, you, you can learn a particular strategy, but you've got to put in the time. You've got to put in the input. And to, to compress that, you can get a, I wouldn't recommend, or you can recommend a mentor. You can get a mentor, but get a coach because a coach holds you accountable. Mm -hmm. You understand? If you want to become... This is what Arnold Schwarzenegger does. He, when he first moved to America, he started, he started training, he started bodybuilding, couldn't speak English, and he had the worst accent. What did he do? He went to elocution classes, and he got an elocution coach to teach him how to speak, because he was Austrian, and a very, very thick Austrian accent. And then he wanted to become one of the best bodybuilders. He went and got a bodybuilding coach. You understand and then after that he wanted to become the governor of California what did he do he got a political coach so find a coach that can give you a trading um, program that you can follow and if you're willing to follow it and, and you might need to pay a trading coach for yeah, that true. Um, and in that in that interim you there's so like all the good traders have got signal services and most of them have got pretty good signals. You just need to literally put the trade in, follow the signals, and if they do mark chart ups, look at it. Look at your own chart and see, spend the time so you can learn the skill and you're no longer reliant on anyone yeah. because the skill will be with you, the skill will be with you for life. And eventually you'll learn to refine mm -hmm. what works for your personality. Do you want to trade a few trades during the day, make your money and the rest of the time go chill by the pool. Mm -hmm. Because when I travel and I'm in Maldives or I'm in Mauritius, I can sit on the beach. My system on trading view, which is based on artificial intelligence, will, will send me a message to be like, it's just give, I go and I look at the chart and I put the trade in and I let it do its thing. An hour or two later, we've made a few thousand dollars close and then that's how we do it. So. So do you want to sleep well at night and trade swing trades? Do you know, are you a medium to short term trader? Or do you want to be a day trader? Then you need to also look at not over trading. Mm. So what suits your personality? Mm. Who are you? What would you like to do in terms of trading? And I don't think any traders have had a look at those foundational, those fundamentals. And if you're struggling with your trading, go to a trading psychologist. Mm -hmm. I did that. Okay. I went to go and see why was I doing these certain things? Because mm. I refuse to lose. I'm a winner. <laughs> I'm going to fight the market. Do yeah. you understand? Yeah. So go and work on your psychology. There's nothing wrong with that. There's, there, and if you can get into those inner subconscious things, you can shift a lot. Yeah, so true. Yeah. So true. All right. So you do fund management right now. So I, I, you know, I just want to get like proper clarity on what is fund management. Yes. Uh, like the, the, the mechanisms of what makes a fund management a fund management yes. exactly. Yeah. So we, um, so currently at the moment we're running a PAM account, okay. which is a percentage allocation management module. Mm -hmm. um, and we run that offshore. Um, because in South Africa, we have got our CAT 1 license, okay, um, and we have got a CAT 2, but we are in the process of getting our Category 2 money management license, yeah. um, which means then we can manage people's funds within South Africa, okay. you understand? Um, but in terms of a, a PAM account, and if it's handled offshore, the client, we're showing them our pooled account, which is traded by our system, and clients are able to put their funds into that and then we only take a percentage of profits mm. so it's only only based on that and you can actually build a very 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 big um, book based on that if you've got trade history so I suppose another way that you could consider fund management an easy way for traders to to enter that is via copy trade yes. you know a lot of good brokers have got them you know XS, XNES has got a good copy trade system Scope has got a good copy trade system um, and XM has a good copy trade system XM has a very good copy <laughs> trade system and if you know how to look at a fact sheet and you know you know how to look at a history okay. that's a great way to do it and it's a great way for traders that have got the skill mm. to, to build a book of a few million 
a few million rand that people are happy to put their capital because a lot of people try trading and they can't manage their emotions. Yeah, and true. I've had so many. I've built, I've built on four occasions um, four of the biggest copy trading um, um, books in the country with various okay. brokers as well as the biggest signal groups sure. as well. Okay. Um, and those have shifted and evolved as brokers were closed and shut down yeah. and things like that. This is why we're looking for a solid institutional home where our you know, um, clients' funds are, the, are, are safe and a lot of people also that trade want to take a large amount of capital and put it somewhere where it can grow, where they understand mm -hmm. it and slow and steady and then as they make profits they put it in, as they make profits yeah, they yeah, put yeah. it in. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's actually, a lot of traders will be given accounts and then they trade those accounts and then they lose those funds and then the person calls fraud yeah. on that person. Scam. Scam. <laughs> Scam. And that trader was trying to do his best to make profits for him mm. or he was over leveraging or he mm. was doing a number of different things. So if you're going to go into managing funds, I would suggest you do it on a copy trade basis. Okay. If you're a very, very good trader, do it on a PAM basis. Okay. Any other basis on that's actually illegal and you, yes. can get, you can get fined by the FSCA and you can be locked up. And a lot of traders have been through that where they were very high profile traders and a lot of people gave them a lot of money mm -hmm. and you know they were trading high risk or they were trading a number of different things. And I think a lot of people and a lot of the public and even people that want to start trading have a misconception about trading. Yeah. Because you have all these guys, hello, do you know about Bitcoin? I can <laughs> trade money for you. Do you understand? Yeah, I have yeah. them dime a dozen every day yeah. contacting me and I'm sure you do as well. Yeah. And then they think it's give them a thousand rand and they're going to give you 20,000 rand at the end. That's running a scam and that's not, that's a, it's not how trading works. Mm. There's, there's, um, it's not an impossibility, but there's no consistency with mm. that. So true. So, in terms of, of working that route, I would go with a, a percentage allocation. You can see all the trade history. That client has full access to their funds. It's in a segregated account under their profile. Mm -hmm. They are choosing whether to follow this particular strategy or to withdraw. And it's all managed and it's all done properly by, by the broker. It is a gray area currently in terms of legislation. Okay. So if traders want to be on the side, on, you know, on the right side, and make sure that, and also follow risk management because I've seen a lot of PAM accounts where they've just yeah. just burned, absolutely so burned true. them. And so many people have come to me and been like, please, can you help us get capital back? And I'm like, you, you know, and even then, then they, they're scared to put that, that capital in again. Mm. So I think we've all been burnt and there's lots of things, but a good quality PAM. And if anyone's got a PAM that they don't, they're not sure about, they can message me. I can look at, I can say, right, this has got this, got this. You can see very, very clearly from the fact sheet mm. um, whether it will be consistent over time. And what your risk appetite is, because most people want to put 5,000 Rand and hope that they can get a huge amount, you know, that they can yeah. get 10,000 Rand at the end of the month or even double their money. That's too high risk. Just as quickly as they can make 50% on your money, just as quickly as they can lose 50%. Mm. And there is, a, there is a max threshold of risk and drawdown to reward where, it's in, where if you increase that risk, you won't be profitable over time. So there's an optimal sweet spot of how much you risk and what your return and expectancy be over time. And if you up that risk per trade and you build it into the model, in, we build it into a trading model and we jot it out over graphing. And you can see if you risk 1% per trade, this is your expectancy. If you risk 2%, this is mm. it. If you risk 5%, this If you risk 10%, still, we're still there. But yeah. you're gonna have to stomach maybe a 60% drawdown. Sure. But then you go to 20% per trade and then you can see you make profit, you make profit, and then it wipes the whole account. Yes. So mathematics and understanding expectancy is a very, very important thing when it comes to that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Like I said, a well of vast knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> and and we we're, we're just like in there, very deep in there. Okay, so uh, okay, we're going, we're going to come to the end right now. And I'm just going to um, ask you a few questions. I, I've got two questions, basically. Yes. Your worst trading day in your career. Career. Ooh. Yeah, it, it can be your worst trade, it can be... Uh, Don't I, remind me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah what, what has been your worst trading day that you've had, so basically? My, my worst trading day was I was, um, I was, trading, um, was trading gold 
and I think I was sitting on about a 400k account and it started going against me there was lots of volatility and my risk was too high and as it was going against me I was scaling in because I was counting on key areas of a bounce and a turn it didn't okay. just kept on going against me kept on funding in capital kept on funding in capital and by total it was but but about, about a million rand towards the end of the day sure. and then that wiped all of that and that was meant to be my holiday money to Thailand and this was just before December I was hoping to make a nice packet before December yeah. and then a week or two later it was the middle of December and I went to go lick my wounds with no money on the beach in Thailand that was that was <laughs> horrible I questioned yeah. everything about my reality okay. and about life and about trading and about all sorts of stuff and um, yeah Thankfully, I haven't done that uh, that amount for for a long time. So, okay. So that was that was absolutely terrible, it's horrible. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it sounds crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, a lesson that you kind of took from that, or was there was a lesson you took from that? So my lesson was, whenever I have large amounts of spare capital, I don't I I take that and I take it off the table. I take it off out of my bank accounts and I put it in things where I can't access it. Okay. So the profits that I'd made from the market, I'll put it into I'll pay for bond on a property. Mm. I'll I'll move it offshore mm. where it's put in a fund that's growing slow and steady or I move it into a portion of my fund and then it's divided across various strategies that grow at various stages. Mm. So I build a foundation you understand large amount of you, you can't build a house on quicksand yes you have to build a strong foundation which is the foundation of a large amount of capital okay. so 40% of 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 my capital will will be the foundation multi millions only growing at 10% the next level I'll I'll match that amount and then I'll look for something that gives 15% okay. and on low risk and then I'll do the next level of the pyramid and then I start looking for something that works at 20% Mm-hmm. and then i'll start looking at a level at 30% various kinds of blue stocks uh, blue chip stocks various kinds of hedge funds and then the next level and then the next level sort of at the top and this is where i'll take sort of only 10% of my capital that i'll trade with meme coins or in higher risk strategies or a number of things so if you burn that 10% you've still got this whole other foundation that gives you this emotional stability that doesn't rock your your world you understand mm, yeah. and that was a very emotional day but i was fine because i still had my foundation okay. of capital sure yeah, <laughs> yeah different levels guys <laughs> yeah uh, and uh, your best trading day so my best trading day was um, taking a nas trade from 10000 um and sorry it was about 20 20,000 and as nas started running bullish i just kept on scaling in at at like doubling as the margin freed up i just put in as the margin freed up i just put in as the margin just freed up i just put yeah. in and it ran to about 700 or 800,000 on that day specifically yeah. um and i closed off and i took profits oh yeah and uh, um i tried and then just 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 as quickly on the next day cuz i thought it would run higher than okay. that and so that was an except that was an exceptionally good day um and then i've also had days consistently with trading very very large accounts where yeah. i've had 7 to 10 trades you know um all hit take profit no losses sure um and that was a, a bag bag of money much much bigger than the nas trade yeah yeah so so i have various you know over the i don't trade as much as i used to because i rather have my 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 funds managed for me okay um because i i I trade consistently over time and I try and protect myself against my personality because I'm a winner and I like to <laughs> I like to make large amounts. I so. love that. <laughs> so and I don't like to lose so I like high probabilities but currently okay. on our signals and I think we're having a 7 to 8 out of 10 win rate. Okay. Um, and we'll be launching Dominion um in the next few weeks which will be a trading app okay um offering free signals offering the pam management mm. offering um 
um, uh, regular analysis, a number of different things. Uh, so we will clean up the signal industry because it's a 9 out of 10 win rate okay. across multiple strategies so you can pick which ones you oh, like nice. and we're not even charging for it. Okay, no, so, that's, that's perfect. So people can actually see how trading really operates. Yeah, yeah, I fully so, agree with you. So, yeah. Okay, so uh, I've introduced a new question to the best trading day. Uh, just a follow-up question is that when when that NAS trade happened, were you following your your? Was I following my strategy? Yeah. <laughs> so no, I wasn't. <laughs> yeah. So so this was I was following it on entry. Okay? okay. It was a very very key area of of and I, I watched it I watched it plunge and watched it wick and I watched it plunge and I watched it wick and I watched that one particular wick at that level at that four hour level of demand and I was like ah oh, this thing this yeah. thing is going to turn and then I just I just hit it at full tilt so it was on my entry strategy. Strategy, but I was not following risk management okay. strategy. Okay, so this was a very very small account where I was where I was literally gambling and I yeah. was just trying. Um, and on my on my um, um, my large capital account that I trade slow and steady over time, I got in on a USD CAD trade. Okay, I got in at the beginning of the year. It was about February. And you know, USD CADs are trending. It was back then, five, seven years ago, it was a large trending currency because it's uh, oil based, long trend. And I got in on entry, and about a month later, as it retraced, I got in and I hammered on that trade. Yeah. And you know, next few months, there was a massive retracement. I got in on that, hammered on that trade. And towards the end of the year, um, it had made so much money that it allowed me to pay off houses and cars and number thing and then I was like now I understand that one trade one trend over the long term can 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 change everything yes. and I've tried multiple different strategies but over the years you learn which which suit your personality which gives you the best return for the lowest risk um, and that just comes from testing multiple of those to get the best return for your capital in the shortest period of time with the lowest risk mm. and the, the less sleepless nights. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, okay, you know you're talking right now and a statement that I've heard a lot of traders say is that no risk, no Lambo. No risk, no Lambo, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> so, so on, on, I've tried that. Okay. There's no consistency over time. Okay. Okay. And uh, you will never hear, you will never hear a successful trader say, oh, wow, like there was one trade and I made all my money on one trade and this is how I made, you know, this is how I became so successful. Maybe in, in a few meme coins and a, and, and a few, few different things. Yeah. You will always hear a successful trader say, you know, when I really started making money, was when I slowed down and I started following the strategy with risk management consistently over time. Follow that on your one account. As you start to learn and you become very proficient at, at being successful, at being successful on that, slow and steady, boring, you know, sleeping well, calm, slow and steady, making really, 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 really good money. And there's, there's plenty sexy about that. There's plenty sexy about making 5% a week on a million dollar account or a $200,000 prop firm account. Well, no, there's plenty sexy about that, trust me, because you're making money consistently all the time. Mm -hmm. But if you want to go into the high risk things where you're scaling in aggressively with high leverage and high margin, take a small amount of that and set that aside in an account with a brokerage that has a bonus or something like that. Mm -hmm. and look for those key entries, especially if you've got a high win rate, and then hit it on that side. And that's where you'll make half a million on that on that particular trade or more, and then you will. But how many traders in this country have Lambos? Mm. Fips water. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah. No risk, no Lambo. None of them have Lambos. Yeah. None of them have been out of the country, mm. you know? They make all this money, they go and pop bottles and stuff like that. They haven't gone and seen what Europe is all about. They haven't gone and expanded their minds. They haven't gone to Dubai. You know, mm. they haven't even gone to New York to see where it all originates from. Yeah. Do you understand? You know, I've traveled to over 30 countries, you know, get out, go and go and see, go and go and be courageous and go and um, expand and see the world, you yeah. know? And 
you know, the Lambo does bring, but they're very, very few. And there are, aren't any traders that have made money from trading that buy Lambo. The ones that buy Lambos have scammed with robots and a range of other things and yeah. stuff like that. So, so, yeah, if you're making money from trading and you're making sufficient, you go buy the Lambo and you move to Dubai. You understand? <laughs> That's what you do. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I love living in South Africa. I, okay. I've, I've never seen... A, a, a career or system that is the the easiest way for someone out of poverty and that's where my heart lies okay. this is why I'm so committed to it and those dark nights where I was blowing accounts I was like I know there's something here mm. and you know someone can start with a thousand rand or two thousand rand and they can make much more than they can make in a whole month working we have the highest unemployment but we also have the highest growth in forex why do you think all the brokers are coming here yeah. people are hungry people are looking for opportunities but they need to be guided in the right direction you know i'm a doctor and i heal people physically sure. but what's the greatest sickness in the world sure. financial sickness people are financially sick they're financially poor so if you can provide if I can take that same passion and that same heart and put it into something that provides the truth and the reality of trading where people can be incubated in an environment that's safe with the right leverage, with the right signals, then we can really, you know, I want to, I want to incubate traders. I want traders to come to me. I want, I want to teach them. I want to show them. I want to show them the right way because on a large scale, there's nothing that will create opportunities like financial markets. Do not rely on the government. The government ain't going to give you shit. Do not come with any sort of entitlement mentality. The government's not going to give you anything. You're on your own. You must take your responsibility and you must seek out if it's, you must seek out mentors. Seek out these, these, these top traders. Speak to them. Harass them. You know, ask them to show you. Ask them to teach you. Because I've never, never seen anything. I invest in everything. I try everything. I'm invested in multiple different industries. I've never seen something that can create something where someone can be so, so, so self-sufficient and can l completely lift themselves out and uh, feed themselves. Sure. Yeah. I'm lost for words right now. <laughs> no, no, thank you so much for your time. I think you. Yeah, no, we had a really good conversation and I hope it's not, it won't be the last conversation. No, I think there'll be plenty more and no, lots of other topics. I still feel like about. there's a lot because I'm looking at my list right here, I'm like, mm. but you know what, for today, <laughs> I think, uh, like I said, we, we, we went swimming really and thank you so much for your time and just uh, just your openness as well. Yeah, great uh, to be here. Yeah, I really do feel like you guys must have taken something with you guys. No, thank you so much, Dr. Rory. It's great. Oh, it's great. Dr. Raw. I yes. really like Dr. Raw. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you guys. Thank you so much for your time and yeah. That's that. It's been great today. to be here. Thank you yeah, so much. I'll definitely will leave your uh, content, uh, your details down below in the description, uh, even on the screen, and people can reach out to you for, especially the Dominion thing. I think 100%. that's really going to be revolutionary. Yes, definitely. 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 So, <laughs> great stuff. Thank you so much, guys. No, so, no, thank no, you. Please. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was another installment of Market Masters with myself, Abit Mbani, where I bring you guys the most talented traders in the industry. And yeah, no, that's that. And a big shout out to XM for sponsoring this. And I'll see you guys on the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. And Rest. we're out. Yeah. 100%. Thank you. Thanks, Robert.